Uh, we should probably get started so people online aren't waiting for us. Um, good evening and welcome to the third SIO Local Roads Committee meeting. Um, please note that we are being recorded, if you didn't know. Uh, I'd like to call the people. Yes, Jillian? I would like to call the meeting to order at 6.34 this evening. Um, can we do a roll call? Um, Roy Townsend is out of town. Um, Secretary Jillian Carey is online. Bob Groden? Here. Ian Huber? Here. I believe Kathy Knoll is also going to join us online. She's not here yet. Rakesh Sharma is also online this evening. Patrick Shields. Here, present. <laughs> Thank you. Bob Walsh. Here. All right. Um, moving along to the adoption of the agenda. Did anyone have any amendments or revisions they wanted to today's tonight's agenda? May we have a motion to adopt the agenda as presented? So moved. All right. Uh, second. Yeah, no second. Yep. Okay. That is the case. Then I guess we need to do a call for the adoption of the agenda. Uh, Bob Groden. Yes. Yes. Uh, Ian Huber. Yes. Patrick Shields. Yes. Bob Walsh? Yes. All right. The agenda for this evening as presented online has been adopted. Um, approval of the minutes. If you went to the packet that was posted on the Sio Township Roads Commission um, agenda, it has the minutes from the December 1 meeting attached to it. There was a lot of um, explanation and, and discussion in that meeting. Did anyone have any amendments or changes they wanted made to the minutes from the December 1 roads meeting? No, I, I look like a little bit. All right. Um, maybe we forward a motion for the adoption of the minutes. Yeah, Ian, all right, thank you. Yep. In a second. Support, second. Thank you, Patrick. All right, uh, again, we'll do a vote. Um, Bob Groden? Yes. Ian? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Bob Walsh? Yes. And Linda Smith, yes. All right, so we've approved the minutes and we've adopted the agenda. Um, correspondence. We have several letters that came to us from right at the last meeting, as well as a letter that was sent to Roy Townsend just within the last few days that was added late on to the end of the packet. Um, Is that the letter referring to gravel? West Delhi? Yes, yeah. West okay. Delhi and the gravel quality of yep. what was used on West Delhi. Um, all of them sort of bring different things in front of the road commission. I guess that's one of the discussion items we need to have at some more length after we decide exactly what it is that we want to do is what we do with these letters so that they don't just end up in a dead letter box. Um, we've got Mr. King from Lamplayer from the December 1 letter. Um, David Reed's letter was more procedural and, and protocol for what we were doing. Donna Palmer's letter was also more of a procedural letter. Um, Mr. Bannon's letter and photos about the Streeter Road, he has followed up with us with a second letter saying it's still a problem. Um, and you know, asking again if there's something we can do in addition to this West Delhi letter that said basically they, the Road Commission has spread stone on West Delhi and it's actually worse, not better. Uh, they think that the quality of the gravel was too finely crushed limestone. And so they have slippery mud now instead of just pie holes. Um, I, I'm not sure, Jillian, 
felt very strongly that we need to go through our resolution and make sure what it is that we're charged to do. But if it's not us, somebody needs to answer back to people so that we don't accidentally create something worse, which is just a spider web of answers. Have we responded to any of them yet? I sent a note to Mr. King saying we would discuss his meeting, his letter at this meeting, um, and to Mr. Bannon saying that, you know, thank you again. We haven't forgotten. Yeah. And Roy Townsend responded to the West Delhi letter saying that, you know, we bring it in front of us and see what we can do. Yep. But we have to come up with some sort of plan for how we get in front of the road commission or the township and somehow create action. I, I don't know what that is. Um, we'll come back to the letters, but that, you know, just so you're aware, and there will probably be a few more, because I've had people contact me asking if they could send us letters. Uh, yeah. uh, at this time, we'll invite members of the community who wish to speak to the Local Roads Advisory Commission. Um, there are opportunity for three minutes each um, discussion. We would ask that it has something to do with roads, if possible. Um, Jessica, is there anyone who has a hand raised that would like to speak during the public comment period? Please raise your Zoom hand if you'd like to speak. I see none, and also uh, Kathy Knoll is joined too. Wonderful, welcome Kathy. All right, well, seeing no one asking to speak at the public comment section. Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm sorry, I do see James Mattimore. All right, Mr. Mattimore, would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Tell us where you're from, please. Mr. Mattimore? Uh, he's on mute by the look of it. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank, thanks. Uh, so my name is Jim Mattimore. Uh, I live on Stone Meadow Court, which is a cul-de-sac that runs off of West Delhi Road. Um, and I've been asked to kind of represent or plead on behalf of our homeowners association um, about the condition of West Delhi Road. Um, I've, I've lived here for about 20 years, so I've gone through a few of the road resurfacing um, and after the last time, um, the one that was done is, is through the special assessment uh, funding, um, the gravel or, or crushed limestone behaves distinctly differently than any of the other times. Um, that's, I sent the uh, initial letter um, to Roy Thompson. I think it's in your packet. But it really, um, it, 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 it's pretty miserable. Um, if it's bone dry, it's very dusty, um, you know, but um, the biggest problem is if there's any unfrozen moisture at all on it, um, it becomes very slippery, very gooey, um, adheres to the car, feet, any, anything else. Um, it's to the degree where most of us on, uh, in, in our subdivision need to clean up their garages about once a week just from the material coming from the road into the cars and then off of the cars. So our plea is um, that um, you, you help us uh, get, get, this ad get this addressed and you know, get, get this fixed. Um, I, you know, we're, we're still trying to figure out like, who, who the right people are to ask for help on this. So um, all of us in the neighborhood are hoping it's you. Um, does anybody have any questions of, of, about the problem? Did Roy Townsend get back to you after the letter was received? I understood that he had corresponded, but perhaps I was incorrect. Uh, he, he was correct on it. He, he um, said that it you know, might be helpful to attend the meeting, hence um, I'm, I'm here virtually tonight. Um, and but he said that your your group he would put it in a packet and your group would discuss it. it. It sounded from Roy's comment that he shared with the, the group was that it's possible that the limestone that was put down on West Del High as a improvement to the road was not the correct type of limestone 
And his point was sort of two pronged. Yes, you've got a problem. And two, um, the township may have paid for a limestone that was not the material that we asked for. And so we're trying to look into both pieces of that. And we're a very new body. Um, and we're learning as we go along. Roy is not here this evening, but he is um, interested in helping us find the right people at the Road Commission to talk about this. And um, you, you're definitely on the radar. That is have you talked to appreciate, anybody else? much appreciated. Jim, have you talked to anybody else? Have you? Still on mute. Sorry. So <laughs> Sorry, um, my beagle was not on the agenda, so I was trying to uh, shut him up there. <laughs> so the um, in the in the past, we've talked to people at the road commission and a few people at the township as well. Um, can't recall offhand who they are, as have several of the neighbors. Um, this is uh, we we work in Roy. It's kind of like this is the first time it's it's actually gotten traction. Um, so we're we're eager to to see progress on it. Thank you. We appreciate you taking time this evening. Is there Thank anyone else much. that wants to comment during the public comment period? No hands. All right. Thank you. Um, moving forward, we're going to have a presentation this evening by Jessica Flintoff, Township Revenues and Expenditures on Local Roads. Jessica, are you ready? I am ready. Take it away. All right. Thank you so much, Linda and Jillian, uh, for having me. Um, can folks um, on Zoom see the, see the, you can see it? All right. Ian is here. All right. I'm that person. So thanks, everybody, for having me. I'm the township clerk. Um, and I uh, have a few responsibilities here at the township including uh, overseeing finances, which is carried out by usually two staff people, right now one staff person, finance manager, Rebecca Motti. And so I, I threw this presentation together and I certainly have questions and I'm always learning as I go. And so would just encourage you, I'm just trying to put some information out there. There's some questions I have for the committee and suggestions. And as well, I would just encourage folks to just interrupt me as we're going through this and hope that this can be um, a discussion. But I just want to make sure that folks, both those who are new and long and more experienced with township committees, know how to kind of plug into the township resources, um, understand a bit about the cycle that we're on and how our funds are used and where funding per road shows up in the township budget. So, with that, um, I'll first start by sharing um, Township Capital Planning and Budgets. Um, and this actually links um, to the Township website. If you go to the Township website, there's a page called Budget and Finance. And I keep that up to date with the current budgets, the current capital plans, any reports that you need to reference. We'll continue to build that out. But in a nutshell, each fall, the Board of Trustees adopts an update to the six-year capital improvements plan. It's been a requirement of our ordinance for a long time, but because we were smaller, we hadn't done it until last fall. And so we put together a capital improvement plan um, for a six-year period, and there's an update underway for this year as well. Roads currently is not in it because it's not really a township asset, right? We don't own roads, right? Um, I just want to highlight for you all that if you start looking at things like longer term capital investments, anything $25,000 and up um, to, to be sure to plug into the capital improvement plan process. Then annually, we prepare a budget and our fiscal year here at the township is April 1 to March 30th. April 1 to March 30th. That's also the fiscal year of the Downtown Development Authority. So each spring, 
prior to April 1st, the Board of Trustees adopts a one-year budget for all funds. So that means planning for the budget, that time is now. Um, the board has designated the supervisor as the person to prepare the budget for the Board of Trustees. And he's working with Sandy Eckler, who's our longtime uh, former finance director, currently the deputy treasurer, has a lot of experience budgeting to develop the budget. So I'd really encourage this committee, as you think through kind of what are your priorities, what do you want to see in this year's budget, to sit down with them really, you know, the next month or two and make sure that they're in there. The Downtown Development Authority, I know we have a, a member here um, who's also part of the Roads Committee, is of course its own entity, but at the end of the day, the fund is actually a township fund. So while legally the Downtown Development Authority is its own entity, the fund is a fund of the township. The debt of the Downtown Development Authority is ultimately the debt of the township. So there's a shared responsibility. The DDA proposes and adopts its own budget. And I know that they have you know, various roads projects here and there. Um, they propose and approve their own budget and it technically has to be approved by the Board of Trustees, but it's really the DDA who's driving that. We've been trying to develop more township policies and procedures. Um, and there's two that I just want to flag for you all to pay attention to. These um, appear on the township website as well. There's one that's an order of resource use and fund balance policy, and the other which is a purchasing policy and procedures. You certainly aren't responsible for becoming expert or administering any of these. You can always call township hall if you have questions. But in a nutshell, the order of resource use policy and fund balance policy basically says the general fund should be the fund of last resort, right? We wanna make sure that in as, as much as we can, that we're finding special revenue for special projects. We don't wanna have the entire township of Sile bearing the costs for a service or a product that benefits a particular neighborhood, for example. And it also goes back to the importance of planning, because when we don't have a plan, the general fund is our last resort. And so we want to do that as little as possible. The purchasing policy and procedures is something I want to bring to your attention. Our new administrator, David Rowley, we appointed as the chief procurement officer. Our purchasing policy is pretty straightforward. We try to follow. We've done a lot better job of following it in the last couple of years. Um, but do want to suggest that for the roads projects that you should think through if there are services such as project management or engineering that you may want to think about. Would you want the township to say, bid out project management and engineering for road SADs? Help, and if so, David or I or others can help develop that scope of work. Um, it has been, it, it hasn't been bid out for road SADs, um, and it's been very piecemeal. So that's one area I just want to suggest for your consideration. So we've got the budgeting, we've got policies that we try to pay attention to and live by, and then we have the financial reporting. So every month, uh, Rebecca Lottie, the finance manager, develops and presents to the board a balance sheet and revenue expenditure reports to the board. They're very, very basic, they have very small print, and we're gonna be working over the next couple years to make them more interactive, but they are accurate and all the information's there. Of course, at any time, please contact Rebecca or me. If you all say, hey, how much did we spend on this road? How much is in this fund or that? Just give Rebecca or me a call, happy to produce any type of report um, needed. Um, Rebecca's also um, implementing some new ways of accounting so that we can do more sophisticated accounting for the township with particular projects and things like that. So the township accounts, fund accounting and the chart of accounts. 
Um, an important difference for those of you who may not be as familiar with government fund accounting is that we, we have, I don't know how many funds, um, you know, 24 or something funds. And each fund has its own budget and each fund has its reserves. So for example, the general fund will have for every year, we'll have the revenue budgeted for the general fund, the expenditures budgeted for the general fund, and then what we call the fund balance, right? That's our savings account. That's the money where we assign to set aside for future years. So a lot of times you look at fund balance and it can create a bit of a public outcry, like, hey, Township, why are you sitting on all, that, all of our money, right? Good question. Well, a lot of that fund balance is actually assigned and set aside for future projects. You'll see that in everything from the giant general fund to the smallest fund of $10,000, the tree fund or something like that. The chart of accounts, you know, simply how we do the fund accounting and what you can't see in the paper copies, but hopefully comes through on, um, the electronic PowerPoint, because I do embed some financial reports, so I'll distribute those to you, Linda, is um, you'll see nine digit accounts. You know, you'll see, say for example, you know, Fund 400. Fund 400 is the Township Road SAD, the big May 2013 Township Wide Road SAD. You'll see nine digit numbers for everything. Now, that's uninteresting to you and should remain uninteresting to you, but unfortunately, <laughs> uh, we're going to have to draw your interest to it in the spring because the township is going to be overhauling all of the numbers, the entire chart of accounts. The state is requiring that all local units of government, townships, cities, villages, counties, adhere to a uniform chart of accounts. And that makes sense. So it's been recommended for years. Um, we have um, done things very differently than what's been recommended, not wrong, but very differently. And so things are going to change a lot. For roads, for example, we have about 11 road SAD funds. That's gonna be combined. Things are gonna be rearranged. So I'm just, drawing your attention to that, I'm going to ask you to pay attention to certain fund numbers and give you a heads up that in the spring, all those numbers are going to change, okay? Any questions so far? Okay. So I want to just flag for you the funds in the township that support roads activities so that you know what funds to pay attention to, to advocate for, to monitor. The first one is the Downtown Development Authority. Of course, it's its own body. The DDA makes its own budget, own decisions. My understanding is that they, you know, periodically have sets of roads. Um, they haven't always had a road projects. And my understanding from Sandy is that, you know, they haven't always had a consistent way of how they treated feeder roads. So for some roads, they would um, finance all of it. For others, it would be shared with the township, other businesses, et cetera. So um, it could be that the DDA you know, becomes more uniform or that they keep doing it that way. In any case, it's something to pay attention to, to keep that coordination going. Can I ask a question? I'm very sorry to interrupt. No, please. We need to have a quorum to start a meeting and stop a meeting, and there's been a family emergency oh, yeah. at home. And our fifth is about to run away. Oh, yeah. Do we need to have a vote to end the meeting and then let your presentation continue? How do we do that? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so, yeah, so the only things that can be done when you lose quorum is to, you could adjourn the meeting to another time if you all want to schedule another time to pick this meeting up. That's our, that's our only option. Legally, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. So you can adjourn or you can 
um, recess to another time. Um, Kathy, if you're on, do you have any other ideas? Former clerk, Noel? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I, I think you're correct. Yes. Jessica, I hate to make you do this presentation a second time, and since we're already well into it, would you mind finishing the presentation? Not at all. No, it's 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 just fine. I apologize for the interruption. Thank you. Oh, not at all. I hope everybody's okay. Um, so so the second fund to pay attention to is the general fund, and there will always be certain roads expenditures out of the general funds. They're always going to be in two activity areas. One is four, four, five roads, and the other is four, four, six. So, you know, that's our annual dust, road dust contract. As well, um, you'll see the 102,500 in from the DDA. That's for the drains. So you may remember, I don't know what it was. Believe it or not, the Board of Trustees meetings blur together for me, too. Um, but they, it was an unbudgeted um, request for culvert repair at Parkland Plaza, I think. When they did the sidewalks just recently. Yes. And so that was a great example of something we could have, should have planned ahead for, didn't. So it comes out of the general fund, okay? Most importantly, are these road SAD funds. There are 11 funds. So the fund, they are series 400. Um, you're wondering what happened to fund 404, I'm sure. Um, it is just inactive, the project is done, uh, but there are 11. Um, and I wanna uh, share with you um, I know that people at home have, have the link to the revenue. Just describe a little bit because um, what each of these are and which ones are important for you to pay attention to. The most important one is Fund 400. That's our 2013 township-wide road SAD. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about some of the issues we should be looking at there. You will see in the revenue and expenditure reports for those of you who have it on Zoom, and those of you in the room, I'll give you a copy of. Let me just quickly describe the columns of each of these reports because they're standard. You'll see the, the GL number, the general ledger number, the description, and then you'll see something that says 2021-22 original budget. That's the budget that the board adopted last March, effective April 1. The next column is 2021-22 amended budget. That's the current budget you know, as it's been amended. The year-to-date balance is the amount of activity, be it revenue or expenditure. The available balance is the difference. And then there's, of course, the percent of budget use. So it's just kind of a good indicator as you're going through. The Township Road SAD Fund um, is one that um, needs some attention. The second one is Capital Projects Road, SAD Fund 401, Road Improvement Revolving Fund 402. Those you don't need to pay attention to so much. Those are mostly um, projects that are done. And again, creating a single fund for each SAD that had been the guidance from the auditors in the state at the time, that is changing. So this is where we're no longer going to have 11 funds. We'll probably go down to about two or three. Um, the fourth one, I don't know if it's part of the roads committee charge, but I wanted um, to suggest that it might be, um, is the East Delhi Bridge Maintenance Fund 403. So that's the ongoing fund, but it's really maintenance now ongoing through the county. The 2013 through 2020 road SAD project funds those are simply funds that are set up for each of the neighborhood SADs established in that year. So within each of those, like you'll see the Glade Rose Drive in 2013, all the way through to 2020, you'll see the four SADs that are currently underway. Does that make sense? Did you all already know all this? Is this boring? Okay. 
Um, okay. All right. So then I, um, you know, I just have um, a couple of, of kind of issues that I wanted to share that might be some recommendations um, that the road advisory committee and your, you know, over the next year or so might bring back to the board. Some are more time sensitive than others, but a couple things that popped up to me that I wanted to bring to your attention for your consideration. Linda. The first is how to attend to the 95% rule. So in road SADs, you must spend 95% of the funds or refund the difference. So we did this um, on the Honey, Honey Creek, uh, Hedberg's property. Um, we hadn't spent the 95% and so refunded the difference. Um, I was alerted um, by Sandy recently that Fund 404, the 2013 Rhodes SADs, the Glade and Rhodes Drive, both have amounts that we haven't spent. So there's kind of a policy question here. You know, we can refund the difference or there may be work to do to use that. And so I guess my, my question is twofold. You know, one, if anybody has insight on these two particular properties, or these two particular roads, so let me know. But two, I think it's part of the policy making of this committee is to just kind of have a township policy about, you know, when do we re-engage neighbors or refund? A second um, area is of course the four SADs currently underway. All of the resolutions that we passed in 2021 are on the website under laws and policies, including the resolutions that control the activities of these four SADs. Um, the contracts um, are being refined by Jim Fink. Of course, since the work was put over to next year, there's a concern about a question about if the prices will hold. Uh, we, I'm seeing some, some no's, so, you know, I mean, um, insight there and also just kind of who's responsible for the ongoing resident communication around that. Again, all of those are in fund 411, the 2020 Roads SAB fund. Um, of course, SAB funds typically, especially at the beginning of one, will have some expenses before we have revenues that's allowed for these particular funds. The Township Road Wide Roads SAD. Um, I actually gave a link to an old newsletter um, because it was such a nice write-up of the SAD and kind of the thinking at the time that I think Lou and David did. Um, so 2013 was the township-wide SAD. In 2020, the board amended the township-wide SAD, which had been done by resolution originally as well as the amendment. And the reason we amended it was because at the time, the intention to capture 10% of those revenues for transportation alternatives hadn't actually been codified in the resolution. And so we went back and did that. That money has not been spent. Um, it is in that fund balance. When you look at fund 400, that money to be spent is a charge of tax. And TAP should be looking at that. We are and looking at it. Super. Importantly, the 2013 township-wide SAD, the 85 bucks per parcel, expires with the winter 2022 tax bill. And so, um, you know, personally, I'm interested if the Roads Advisory Committee, you know, would recommend that we let that expire, that we do something similar, something different, nothing at all. Uh, another question, you know, I had is just the, the park road. Yes. Why would you need the recommendation on that? How oh, soon? On that one? Yeah. Well, I think it would depend on what the recommendation is. So if it's to take it to voters, that needs more lead time. I asked Sandy for her opinion, um, and she said um, if we were to do it, as an SAD with voters, it might be more like the fire SAD. 
so that it's a um, so that it's not subject to capture. So an SAD millage, really. So the fire SAD is not subject to capture, and she believes that's a possibility. Could you her. explain subject to capture? Um, to the DDA capture. Yes. And we would have to look at this because, you know, this 2013 was before my time here, and I hear that there was different legal opinions at the time about what could be taken to voters or not. Certainly, you know, a millage is always a possibility. Um, you know, as you know, um, if something is to go by voters, it can go to voters one of two ways, uh, through petition of the voters themselves or through a board initiated um, resolution, a board initiated um, proposal, excuse me. So I'm not quite sure, definitely this year, um, in terms of the election cycle, um, there's a possible special election in May um, and a certain special election in August and in November. August being the gubernatorial primary and November being the general primary. In 2023, there could be a special election in May or August. So a special election could be called if the township or other local unit called such an election. Yes. Do you know what the date uh, the millage proposal would have to be submitted by if it were going to go on to the August or the November elections? I do. I will email that to you so I don't misstate it right now. Um, but yes, that's all that's set by hard, statute. Hard statute date. Yeah, so I will email you the hard 2022 statute dates. Thank you. Sure. Just another question. Sure. Uh, how much money is in the uh, that ten percent from the local votes SAD? Um, it's over four hundred thousand. Was four hundred and five thousand as of last year. Have to recalculate it for this year. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, quick question, Jessica. Sure. Hi, um, didn't want to interrupt you earlier. You said the 95% rule, according to that, we must spend 95% or refund the difference. Refund the difference to whom? Uh, to the residents. So these were to the neighbors who paid into the SAD. So they have overpaid for the work that yeah. was done. Perfect. Okay. That's what I thought. Thank you. Sorry. Um, and I guess, of course, the other one is sort of the Park Road SAD that's hanging out there. Um, it's not township initiated until it's township initiated. It's not been initiated. That's all. So if we're going to do it, bring it to the board, we'll decide we'll do it. Um, or not, or something different. I was going to use that as an example. We were going to walk through the Public Act 188 talking about the difference between the citizen-initiated SAD versus the township-initiated SAD. And kind of look at what has been done so far with that one yes. and see where it fits. Or it, right now it's in this weird limbo. And if it's, yes. if, if it, as it is presented, wants to be pushed forward, if it needs to be amended, I, I think the idea is good, but there may be some changes. Certainly, and I am, you know, no expert in, in you know, um, the SADs, um, but what I do know at the board, there has been no action on the Park Road SAD um, today. And with that, a um, little bit of clip art, um, call any time, and thanks. Thank you very much, Jessica. There's a lot there. Um, I, I will admit that I actually read budgets for fun. <laughs> right on. Budget variances year over year are 
Awesome. One, one of my things. We need you. Um, so just looking at that, if you are able to, I can email you for a later date. We had had a discussion about the fact that the Washtenaw County Road Commission has these matching funds that you need to speak up and say you will match to by, I believe it's May 1st each year. Okay. And that is a hard date we know is coming up. Lori Townsend pointed out to us. I know that we now have a fund four, four, five and for the roads, road dust and four, four, six for the drains. Yeah. Uh, we've had several roads present to us that definitely need drainage and it needs some road dust help. Yeah. Assuming that that's coming in the 21, 22 budget, what is currently thought would be put forward for the Washtenaw County Road Commission in the 22-23 budget? I don't know. That's that's the work that needs to be done in the next three months. Do you see that as something that we need to research and try and present to the board? I do. And what I recommend doing is sitting down with Will and Sandy and kind of hashing that out because I, in, in terms of the dollars, in terms of the projects, I, I would defer to you all kind of who the best subject matter experts are. Okay, well, I know that's another hard date that we've got, to, you know, to look at. Time creeps quickly. Linda, did you say that was May 1st? I believe it's May 1st that we have to make that. Yeah, so I would recommend to you then to, um, if possible, to have it aligned with our budget cycle so that that's decided prior to the adoption of the budget, which would be in March for April 1st. So it needs to be presented to the board when? By when? Well, it, I would recommend presenting it as part of the budget process. So um, Will and Sandy are working on that. I would imagine they would have presentations in late February or the first meeting in March. That's to get the dollar. <laughs> I think the thing that's going to take time, if we still don't know where the data is, is where do we allocate those dollars to? What are the priorities? Yes. Based on you know, whatever the dollar numbers are, we can spend yeah. all of it. There's no lack of sure. road need. I don't, yeah, I don't know that we have to get a very hard decision about where exactly yeah. each but, nickel is spent, yeah. but to rather get the maximum matching that we can from the road commission if it's available in the budget. Yeah. Yeah. In, you know, and, I, and I'm still a newcomer. I've only been here since June of 2019. But, you know, the way it was was done before really um, leaned hard on the expertise of, you know, Lou and David and Jack. So certainly, the to my knowledge, and Kathy, correct me if I'm wrong, the board wasn't engaged as a board discussion in that before. Oh, Kathy's still muted. Okay. That's okay. Um, so I'm not saying that's right or wrong or, you know, anything that there may be a better process for it, but certainly there's not a template to follow. And that's one of the things we're trying to come up with because it would be a great thing to have year over year. I mean, be awesome. policies and procedures that we're trying to somehow establish. Yeah. But that goes back to what is our charge specifically. Well, going to get a whole bunch of charges is kind of what our priority we can only do a handful of these. How will we pick off the ones? It seems like your presentation highlights a whole bunch of. It does. And Jillian wanted us to go back through the original resolution and make sure that we're not stepping over or stepping under. Should we ask the question? At this point, we're having a discussion, not a meeting, because we no longer have a quorum and we can't actually end the meeting. So the meeting has structure in that we're all here and we allocated time to it. Does anyone have a problem with us continuing through the agenda to try and work on some of these discussions since we're not actually acting on any of them? Are there any implications for that, Jessica? Um, I mean, you're not supposed to. Are there implications? Probably not. Jillian has her hand raised. 
Yeah, from what I, I have a discussion with David Rowley the other day, um, trying to figure out, you know, this this new mess that uh, the state has left us with. Um, I believe he said that uh, there still has to be a vote to close the meeting with whomever is in, in attendance. So that would be the, I, I don't know how many people are there. Three or four. 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 Okay, sorry. So you would close that and then, um, you know, we could have, I guess we could have a discussion, but there's no voting. And since the public is here, then it is an open meeting. Is that yeah, correct, it's, Jessica? You know, I mean, the right thing to do would be to adjourn to another time. And, and okay. maybe you all want to recess or adjourn to, you know, set an additional time or, or not. This is a, you know, this is a, I'm really hoping this situation resolves itself in the next month or so as we get through this worst fight. Yeah, all right, you. well, I know it's frustrating and um, you may regret having asked me. <laughs> no, I think you want to do the right thing. This was an unforeseen situation. What happened? What happened? Right. Happened? I'm sorry, Jillian, say it again. No, Kathy. What, what, <laughs> okay. what happened? What happened, um, I whispered in my ear, it was mentioned at the beginning of the meeting that he had had a, a rotten day and some serious family problems and then whispered in my ear and said there was an immediate urgent family emergency at home and he just walked right out. Okay. I, I have to respect that. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think we should adjourn the meeting. Can we try and schedule something I mean, I don't know what everybody's availability is, but just try. Yeah, you can definitely set an additional meeting time. Set an additional meeting or something. We could do like a doodle poll or something to find a common date where we're all available. Does a doodle poll work for everyone else as far as trying to find another date this month that we can meet? Sure. We do we have can. a meeting set for February. Wednesday, February. Yeah, the first Wednesday in February, which is the second. But I would love to try and get through the charge and really get a little bit firmer handle on this so we don't lose all of February because, as it's been pointed out, um, there is some time is of the essence things coming up. Um, that is fine with me. A, a doodle poll, I will tell you that I am out of town um, the 13th through the 20th. But if Roy Townsend's available, it certainly could proceed without me. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I guess with um, that recommendation, we will let everybody off the hook early this evening. Um, I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Okay. One of us has to. Okay. Sure. Well, then. I reluctantly move to adjourn the meeting. All right. I reluctantly second. All right. Uh, so I guess, do we still take a vote just to be clear who is here? Um, Linda Smith, present. Um, Patrick Shields. Present. Ian Hubert. Present. And somebody help me out. That was Bob Walsh that yes. left. No, it was Bob Groden that, that left. That was Bob Groden that left. So that was Bob Walsh who, who first did already. Here. Yes. Thank you. All right. Well, so the meeting is adjourned at 722 by the four members who exist. And we will try. Ian, are you able to do a dual poll? Yes, I will admit I don't know how to do that. I'll do it. It's just it'll end up being somewhere where you can select some dates. And what we're looking for is as many dates, many people as possible. All so right. Five or more. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I tried. In, in person and guess. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes, yeah. we have to have. Unless the legislature does us a favor. And yeah. You have to make sure that it goes through Christy because if there's the room is taken. Good point. Thanks for uh, thanks for putting the hang. Yeah. It should be okay as long as you're not conflicting with another regular committee, which and mm -hmm. all those dates are on the website. Yeah. Okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much for the presentation yes. and for raising those issues. It's very helpful. You're welcome. No, thanks for having me. Bye, everybody.
All right, thank you, Jess. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.